resonate with you, that you'd like to use as a conversation starter, that you'd like to actually base some questions around. For example, have they been doing quite a lot with the community for underrepresented individuals? Can you list some of those going into the interview and, and ask them about how they do that or why they do it, why it's important to them? And another thing I really recommend is searching the company name or the person that you might be meeting on YouTube. Now, I say this because you might actually find some talks or some presentations that they may have done. And it's a really good way for you to get to know that individual in terms of how they might communicate, the knowledge that they have. You might learn something really cool from one of their talks. And again, amazing to bring up when you go into an interview like hey I watched your talk on how to come out of your comfort zone and the points you mentioned about xyz they really resonated with me thank you for that you know it makes them feel good as well as an interviewer and they remember that that goes a long way also in terms of preparation I would say having a look at the LinkedIn profiles of individuals who are already working in that company that might be doing a similar thing to you or in, in the team that you might be interviewing at. And just see if you can find any common themes, common keywords that are coming up that you notice in maybe they're about them, their skill section, anything that you see that you feel aligns with you that you can also then bring up in the interview. Um, and be honest and open and say, you know, I, I did some research on the people in the team and I can really see that there's a consistent value around collaboration, inclusion, thinking outside the box. And this just really aligns with me because I'm so passionate about doing this. And this is an example of how I did it in my previous company. Again, it's great ways to start these conversations and ask questions. And finally, for interview preparation, I would say, actually running the job description through a word cloud. Uh, so what that will do is it will highlight the key words that are, are most frequently being mentioned. And with those words that are coming up, can you prepare three really tangible examples of how you have achieved those things to go into the interview with? If you can go into that interview with three examples where you can explain the situation, the task, the action, and the results of the work that you did to showcase this type of keyword, amazing. I really recommend that you do that. And just lastly, I would say, reframe what an interview is to you. And this is easier said than done. I really understand this, especially with everything going on in the world. If we've been laid off, it, it's you know a need for this to go right sometimes, but that can cause a lot of anxiety and maybe a lot of unnecessary stress that might then impact the way we perform. So if we can refrain when we go into an interview that this is gonna be a conversation with somebody who's quite like-minded to me, into the same technologies, passionate about similar things. And I'm gonna share with them the experiences that I have, the things that I enjoy the most, my personal mission statement, and I'm gonna learn about them and their journey and see if this is a company that I wanna work for. If you can reframe it to just being an open conversation and chat, hopefully that can also help to overcome those nerves that might come in, which just wanna say are very natural and very normal. Absolutely. Wow. Like these are gems in this uh, conversation, in this entire episode. I think uh, if, if students and, and people who are looking for jobs can, you know, just do all of these. I've never heard anybody talk about the Google News uh, and the GitHub repository. That is amazing. Like all of these points are really thought through and the star framework, that is that is a, a beautiful way to, um, you know, structure your answer so thank you so much for sharing that uh, uh, these are definitely going to be helping a lot of people uh, as they listen to it um, like in in general uh, I know that you've been a part of the tech recruiting for industry for so long for almost a decade now uh, what is it that you think can be uh, uh, you know if you want to zoom in like I uh, know that you've been a part of uh, data science communities and AI communities 
like what is it uh, play uh, a, a good job role maybe like if you could uh, list down that would be great for women to uh, you know join in uh, as a woman in data science ambassador myself i am also trying to uh, you know share the, the the good news that hey young girls this is a great place to be in but uh, i would love to hear your thoughts on that as well sure sure so any in any position anything in technology i recommend getting involved with okay so first of all don't ha- hold yourself back from that stereotype that i can't work in tech because i don't there is something potentially for everybody if you want to be more creative there are positions that suit that if you're more uh, inclined to project management but to chime in on data science which is a really exciting industry and it's amazing that you're also in that and the work that you do to influence and impact the community is amazing um, first of all it's the impact you know uh, you're working towards automating processes that were manual in companies and that can help save companies so much time so much money you're truly making a big impact in the organization that you're involved with also the things that you can do within data science there are so many incredible missions that you can work towards whether that be fighting cancer cutting down on co2 emissions climate tech right the possibilities are really endless and the industry is only growing and only thriving in terms of what can be achieved with ai machine learning with data science a second piece for me is learning you're going to learn so much being in the data science space it's a great opportunity for you to really be creative to think outside of the box to be able to experiment you know really solving complex challenges and and problems real world problems and being able to interact with people you know the heart of a data science t- scientist is always asking questions asking the why and the how so learning so much from a commu- from from a communication standpoint which will in turn help to enhance your confidence and your own abilities and you'll only continue to flourish and thrive the more that you're within this industry and you're working on these topics so data science is a fast changing field but there's always something to learn so i would say learning is a huge thing that you can be guaranteed working in data science and then the growth in general i believe that the world economic forum they had predicted that the job with the highest growth and demand by 2025 would be that of a data scientist so the statistics are there to show that and to back things up as well so i really recommend anybody who's listening to this who's considering a career in data science go for it you can do it Thank you so much. I, I think that is that would be the the, the title of this uh, clip. That is so amazing because I think you you put it up in a much better and in, uh, in inspiring wo- uh, way than I have. And now in the last five minutes, I would like to go through uh, something I'm trying out as a new format, and that is a rapid fire section. Uh, I know you've been talking so much, but I I I, I mean, all of them were really helpful tips. Uh, but uh, let's get into it if you are game. Yes, yeah. let's do it. Let's go for it. So, uh, first one, one book that is a must read for anyone who wants to be a founder or a co-founder and start a business or a non-profit. Okay, I'm going to go with Start with Why by Simon Sinek. There's been a bit of a theme through the conversation and I I think I've spoke a lot about the why in which you do things and that book for me was a real game changer that gave me that understanding of why the why is so important and needed and how the why can keep you energized keep you motivated on whatever journey you're on so I'm going to go for that one yes yes we did touch upon those thank you so much uh next question one podcast that you cannot go a week without listening to. Okay, that's an interesting one. I kind of go back and forth between a few different ones, but I'm going to go for The Diary of a CEO. Yay, me too. I listen yes. to him every every week. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we, good. Have you um have you read his book as well, Happy Sexy Millionaire, Stephen Barr? I just got that last week. Uh, 
I am I'm, I'm still going through like I, I have a lot of books in parallel, but I'm yet to finish that. Uh, but it's it's an amazing. It's put in a lot of effort and you know writing yeah. those short but relatable uh, words. Uh, I I really love that. Um, Stephen Marlow fan here. <laughs> yes, Team Stephen. <laughs> So the next question would be, who is your role model uh, in in tech or business? Okay, so there's two two lenses I want to look at this through. So for me, the role models are the people that genuinely I speak with every single day, who are doing amazing things, and I'm so lucky and fortunate to be able to have these conversations with individuals from underrepresented communities. I, I truly believe there's inspiration to take from everyone's story. Uh, if I was to name a few, it would be Vanessa Eriksson, who heads up the Girls in Tech in the Nordics, uh, Plamena Cherneva, who is heading up the Nordic Women in Tech Awards, uh, Juliana Arajuyu, um, who is founder of Bila, a, a wonderful community. And I'm gonna say that the main role model for me in business, uh, it's actually my dad. So uh, my dad has had a huge impact on on me throughout my whole life, and I really owe it to him. My work ethic, my passion. He's always given me that confidence that I can do things and I can achieve greatness. So actually, the biggest role model for me is my dad, and and that's a big motivation for why I do what I do as well. It's it's making him proud every day in that impact that I'm I'm making. So I'm gonna go and say my dad as well. That is so nice. I, I'm really happy to that you mentioned that. Uh, making our parents proud on and making seeing them see that we are our own CEOs now, that 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 feeling is out of this world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so so true. Yeah. So true. Um, uh, because you've been a recruiter, uh, the next rapid fire question would be: Is a master's or an MBA uh, a really a must for you know when you apply for jobs? That's something that keeps people holding back. And I through this podcast because it's about business, and I'm, I'm referring to the master's degree of MBA. A lot of people ask this question. So. Mm. Mm-hmm. I'm actually going to say uh, no. It's not a deal breaker. Now everybody has different opinions on that. But I know people who have incredible careers working in technology and they didn't go to university, but they built up a really strong portfolio on GitHub. They worked so much in open source, went to so many hackathons, done so many collaborations, that they have a fantastic career. So I'm going to say no. Yay. Um, (laughs) What else would you be uh, saying? Like, it's a big no um, for... When you're making a resume, um, what would, you know, Ellie King say, no, this should not be a part of your resume? Okay, so for me, I would say that actually the approach of using the same CV for every job application is the biggest no for me. When you're doing your CV, making sure that it's very tailored and very specific to each individual job and company that you're applying to, that would be the most important thing I would say. So your CV should be a reflection of that role that you're applying to. And that does mean that it can get a little bit frustrating, a little bit uh, annoying that we have to do that, especially if we're making so many applications, that that could be the thing that sets you apart from somebody else. Thank you. Thank you. That was the last one. And we are on time as well. So that is an amazing hour and thank you so much for doing that. I think I might actually go back and listen to this whole thing again to take more notes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so much. That was a lot of wisdom in one hour. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Again, it's been such a pleasure. Uh, I really appreciate it. It's been really fun. Yes, yes. And wishing uh, at Equal IT all the success in the world. I, I actually wish there's a beeline pipeline created, you know, every business in the world should come, reach out to you, fix their DEI and then only start hiring. <laughs> so, wishing you all, all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any Anything else that you would like to share to our listeners uh, about your podcast or the business? Feel free. 
yeah it would just be to um please feel free to get in touch like i say through linkedin whether that be myself my co-founder jonathan down our incredible employee finlay green um and our linkedin page which is equal it uh, so we're very open to a conversation on how we can work to inclusify and diversify your, your teams and, and help you recruit more inclusively and yeah feel free to check out our equal inspired podcast as well so it's uh, an initiative just to amplify the voices of non-dominant groups who are doing amazing work so yeah feel free to check all of that out we're available on um apple music spotify youtube and also tiktok as well we have some clips Ooh, i'm gonna follow that now Yes, thank yeah. You. Thank you so much. Thank you.